Welcome back to our series on rose and perfumery. So in this series, we're taking a deep dive into rose. And we started off by looking at how rose is harvested and what it smells like. And then in the last video, we started looking at the constituents of rose, starting with the terpene constituents. In this video, we're gonna continue looking at the constituents of rose, and this time we're gonna have a look at the aldehydes. Okay, so aldehydes, what are they? Well, in fact, aldehydes are just another functional group in chemistry, like the ones we've already covered, for example, acetates, i.e. it's just a structure of atoms or an arrangement of atoms in space that's commonly found on molecules. Now, there are actually a lot of aldehyde molecules in perfumery, and a good way you can tell if a molecule is an aldehyde is usually its name will end in AL as the suffix. So for example, hydroxycitronallal is actually an aldehyde. However, in perfumery, when we're referring to the aldehydes as a category of raw materials, or when we use the descriptor aldehyde to describe smells, what we're usually referring to is a very specific subclass of aldehydes, namely the straight chain or aliphatic aldehydes, pretty much the most simple basic aldehydes you can get. They're simply a long straight chain carbon chain molecule with an aldehyde group on the end. So, aldehydes have been used in perfumery since the start of the 1900s, but they didn't come into prominence until 1921. 1921, that was the year that Chanel No. 5 was launched, the greatest selling fragrance of all time. And the perfumer Ernest Beau famously used a whopping dose of 1% aldehydes in the final formula. Now you may think 1%, that doesn't sound like a lot, but these aldehydes, they're really, really strong. You don't need a lot at all. And 1% is actually a really large amount for aldehydes, given that they're usually used at 0.1% or less in the formula. Anyway, today aldehydes are used extensively, albeit at quite small levels, in a multitude of perfumes across the board. And the reason for that is, firstly, they're cheap, but secondly, they're quite good at masking bad smells. This could be useful in different types of products, say soaps, for example, where you have certain other things in the formulation that are there for functional reasons, and you want to hide the smell of those but they are useful in fine fragrance as well. And part of the reason for that is they can help to add a kind of diffusion. So when you open the bottle of perfume, the perfume really jumps out at you. Anyway, the reason that we're looking at aldehydes specifically is because some of the formulas that I'm gonna use later in this series, they actually say that you need to use some of these aldehydes in the rose base that they suggest. The three aldehydes used in those formulas that I've also got are the three that I've got here. So those are aldehyde C12 lauric, aldehyde C11, and aldehyde C9. So as far as I could find out, on the internet it does seem to say that aldehydes are naturally found in rose oil, though it seems to be that because they're so strong and found in such low levels, the GCMS reports which we are using in some of the other videos, they don't actually necessarily show up on those. However, the book which I'm using as a reference for the formulas later on in the Accords section, that does say that aldehyde C9 is definitely found in rose oil. But either way, these are the ones we're gonna smell. So there are obviously a lot of other aldehydes out there and maybe I'll do another full video on the aldehydes at some time in the future. But for now, we're just gonna look at these ones. So I've got these three aldehydes. They're all diluted to 1% because they're quite strong, though even at this level, I can already smell them down from the table. They're that diffusive effect, which I talked about, I can definitely smell that. I can smell these aldehydes without having to even go up to the scent strip. So let's start with aldehyde C12 lauric, or also called in chemistry, simply dodecanal. So this aldehyde, to me, it smells, well, it smells soapy. I'm gonna give you that. It smells like a soapy kind of candle wax smell. And it reminds me a little bit of when you're kind of melting soap or candle wax, you know, when you go to make your own. And the kind of smell you get when you melt those things is very similar to this smell that I'm getting from this. So it's quite interesting to me because on their own, these aldehydes, to me, they don't really smell like, you know, this amazing thing and they don't really remind me of rose. So I guess we'll have to leave it to later on in the series when we start blending them to see how they affect the formula rather than simply how they smell on their own. Anyway, moving on to the next one, which is aldehyde C11 or hendecanal. This one is, I think it's a little less bright to me. It's maybe a little less fizzy. It's a bit more, I wouldn't say it's a musky smell, but it's moving slightly in that musky powdery direction. Whereas the C12 I found was a bit more, I would just say bright. It was a bit more of a high pitched note, as you might want to say, a bit cleaner. 
but it's still quite a waxy, clean, kind of soapy smell. And it does remind me slightly maybe of that kind of waxy fruit peel you get a bit as well. And I could imagine some kind of waxy fruit or waxy plant. I can imagine this uh, smell being part of that. And finally, we're going to move on to the nonanal or the aldehyde C9. So this is the one that's apparently found in rose oil. Now, when I smell this one, I definitely get that it's different from the other two a bit more. It still, they all still smell waxy. This one still smells waxy for sure. But this one actually starts to smell a bit like orange. And the other ones definitely smell like quite gray colorless smells. Whereas this one to me really has a hint or a tinge of orange to it. So it's kind of waxy, but it also smells like orange. And I would uh, liken it to almost like orange medicine or something like that. It's, it's not like a fresh, juicy orange smell, but it's kind of a distinctive aspect of the orange smell that you can definitely recognize with this. So I find it interesting that this one particularly is found in rose, simply because um, I would imagine that it makes the rose smell more like orange if this was in there. So again, when we move on to doing the blending, I guess we'll actually start to see the effects of these aldehydes on the accords. But yeah, they're all, so they're all quite interesting smells. I definitely found when I first tried to smell the aldehydes, I wasn't really quite sure what I was smelling. I think when I was very new to perfumery, I, I couldn't really pick them up quite away. And it took me a while to realize that they were these uh, very waxy smells. And I think as you get used to smelling them, you start to get better and better at smelling them. I don't think that smelling them in a 10% dilution would really be that good. The other thing I've noticed about these aldehydes is they're very much top notes. So firstly, that's quite indicative of the fact that they're very diffusive. And usually that's the case for top notes, but also they only last on the scent strips for about eight hours or so, give or take. I would say for the first few hours, they're quite strong. And by the time it gets to a day, you can barely smell them on the scent strip. So these are very much things that are affecting the top note of your perfume and giving you that, that boost, that diffusive radiance. Anyway, that's it on the aldehydes. In the next video, we're going to move on to another group of aroma chemicals. So I'll see you then.